Have you ever wanted to build your own video game? In this video series, you will start building a simple tower defense game in Scratch. Along the way, we will learn why glitches happen in games and learn about one of the hardest problems in writing code. There are two parts to tower defense games. A large number of enemies trying to get past you and your own army that can't move but can shoot at the enemies to stop them. So let's jump in and get started. First, start by creating a sprite. You can pick this goblin sprite from the Scratch Sprite Library, or any other sprite to act as your enemy. We'll make this one sprite turn into a whole army of goblins using the Create Clone functionality. First, grab the when flag, click block, and add a forever loop. Then, inside the loop, add the create a clone of myself block, and add a wait block so that new clones aren't created too quickly. If we ran this right now, all of the clones would appear in the same spot as the original sprite so you wouldn't be able to see them. To fix this, let's add the go to random position block. We will want to run this every time a clone of the original goblin is created. So add it to the when I start as a clone event. Then, add a repeat until block, which will control the behavior of all the clones. You will repeat until the goblin clone is touching the edge of the screen like this. Add a delete this clone block so that the goblin gets deleted once it touches the edge of the screen. Finally, inside the loop, add a move block so that each of the clones starts moving once it's created. When you run this, nothing seems to happen. Pause the video and see if you can figure out why. The problem is that the original goblin is hidden, so the clones are hidden too. We'll add a show block that runs for every new clone, and now you can see the goblins appearing. Since they are appearing all over the screen, we'll add a quick set x block to move them to the left side. We can look at the x coordinate of the original goblin to figure out what value to use. Now let's make a second kind of enemy. We'll add this bat. After we put the bat sprite down somewhere, we'll go back to the goblin and drag both of its scripts to the bat sprite to copy them. Now we'll add a sprite to represent our army. I'll use this wizard. Right now he's facing the wrong way. I flipped him around by using the costume editor. To set up the wizard script, add the when fly click block. Then add a forever loop. We'll make the wizard look like he is casting spells by using the next costume block, and a wait block to slow him down a little bit. Finally, add a lightning bolt sprite so that the wizard has something to shoot. Edit the size to make it a bit smaller. You'll have the lightning bolt get cloned repeatedly, so add when I start as a clone. Just for the sake of this video, have the lightning bolt point at a random direction toward the left. Start by pointing it at negative 90 degrees. Then, have it turn a random amount between negative 75 and 75. You can click the when I start as a clone block a few times and see that it's working. Now, similar to the goblins, add a repeat until block, and select touching edge. Delete the clone once it touches the edge of the screen. 
Inside the loop, add a move block. See how it's working? Now, make the goblins and bats disappear when they are hit by lightning. Add an ore block to the goblin, and add a touching lightning block. This will make the goblin delete itself either if it reaches the edge or if the lightning touches it. Now do the same thing for the bat too. Go back to the wizard and have him start making clones of the lightning bolt by adding the create clone of lightning block. Remember to show the lightning bolt when it's first cloned. Let's add a game over sign. You can use this button from the sprite library. Go into the costumes tab to make it look however you want. Go back to the bat sprite code. Add a if touching edge block and a broadcast game over block. You will add code that says if this bat is touching the edge broadcast the game over message. You will also need to do this in the goblin, so copy this block over there too. Add the if statement right before the delete clone block. Do it again for the bat too. In the code tab for the game over button, set it up to hide when the green flag is clicked. Add a when I receive game over block and show the game over sign. You've actually run into another problem. Even when you click the green flag, the game over sign is still showing. Pause the video, see if you can figure out why, while I add a stop all block after the show block, and finish up the game over signs costume by actually adding the text game over. Did you figure it out? The bat and goblin will sometimes appear at the edge of the screen when they are first created. To make sure that they only appear within a certain y-axis range, you can set the largest value to 130 and the smallest value to negative 130. Now you can do the same thing for the goblin. Now you can add a background. Click the stage in the lower right, and then the new backdrop button in the lower left. You can pick the savannah background or any other background that you like. You don't want the goblin to look like it is floating in the air, so change the range of Y values where it can appear. When you hit the green flag, you can now see everything in action. Right now, your lightning bolt kills everything in its path, which may be a bit more overpowered than you want. In the next video, We'll try to make a less powerful lightning bolt, but we'll discover a really big hairy problem with the game we've created so far, and start talking about how to fix it. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe.